The Full Melt Show is intended for a mature audience. It contains adult themes, adult content, and sometimes adult language. Listener discretion is advised. It's the Full Melt Show. Did you want to get high, man? This howdy duty got wooden balls, man. I got a joint here, man. I've been saving for a special occasion. Play on fire, bro. Uh, hey, I hope the drums don't mess up your upholstery, man. Nah, I'm in a band too, man. Oh, are you? Yeah, I'm a lead singer, man. Ah, oh, that's it. Yeah, man. we play everything from like Santana to El Chicano, man. You know, like everything. Hey, I'm just a love machine. And I don't work for nobody but you. I'm just a love machine. And I don't work for nobody but you. Oh, my temperature rise and then I go for her thighs. And then I say, come on in my shoes. Guacamole in my shoes. Hijo de la chinga. Is that a joint, man? <laughs> that got there. Looks like a, a quarter pounder, man. <laughs> Let's let play. Hey, be careful with that shit, man. Uh, well, is it heavy stuff, man? <laughs> Will it blow me away? <laughs> put your seatbelt on, man. I'll tell you that much. I've been smoking since I was born, man. I can smoke anything, man. You know, like I smoked that Michoacan, man, Acapulco Gold, man. I even smoked that tight stick, you know? Tight stick? Yeah, you know, that stuff is tied to a stick, you know? Oh, uh, yeah, tight that, stick. Yeah, that didn't even do nothing to me, man. I could probably smoke this whole joint, man, and still walk away, man. Wouldn't be no problem at all, man. Talk, talk it out, man. Dude, that's a bit. Kinda grabs you by the boo boo, don't it? Hey, man. What? What? Oh! It <laughs> was in this shit, man. Mostly Maui Wowie, man. Yeah? But it's got some Labrador in it. What's Labrador? It's dog shit. What? Yeah, my dog ate my stash, man. I had it on the table and the little motherfucker ate it, man. Yeah? So I had to follow him around the little baggie for three days before I got it back. It really blew the dog's mind. You mean we're smoking dog shit, man? Are you high? I am high. This is the full melt melt. Give me a break. The full melt show. A marijuana discussion about news, culture, politics, and lifestyle. Fullmelt.com. Toll free. 844-420-TALK. 844-420-TALK. Live on the air once again for uh, a new dawn, a new era, a new day. It is the Full Melt Show. I'm your host, Steve Green. And last week, we were off the air for about a whole week. Oh, for good reason, I'll tell you. All right, let me tell you. So the, the thing that was going on last week is, uh, first off, and, and this is, uh, I, I suppose this is completely related, to, uh, kind of, to the show. Uh, so you know that I've had the studio dog. I've, I've had the studio dog laying around. And the studio dog has been in training for a great deal of time, and uh, he is a support dog. Um, he's also a service dog. So he's got double classification in the... Uh, in the arena of uh, taking care of people, he's a working animal. He's he's got double classification and protection of under the law, federal law. In fact, he's got classification under three federal laws, twice over. Once as a support dog, and we don't have to talk about what that is because it's different than uh, also uh, a service dog. So he's 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 both. And so I've got a uh, crazy management team in the complex in which I live who has decided on their own that uh, they can breed ban my service animal. 
that they can say that the dog that I have is against their rules because they brand the be- the they ban the breed and I can't have them as a service animal. And that somehow this dog is vicious and aggressive and cannot be tolerated as a safety threat to members of the community here in the park. And it's all a lot of hogwash is what it is. This is nothing more than uh, people standing up because they want to ballyhoo about a breed ban. Now, let me just tell you really quickly that if you're one of these groups of people who wants to brand to ban breeds of dogs, ban an entire breed or breeds from your community or neighborhood, uh, that you clearly shouldn't have dogs. You shouldn't have them at all because you don't know what you're doing. Uh, banning a breed of dog, for uh, especially because you think they're dangerous or aggressive or vicious or whatever, uh, clearly you're just walking around with a dunce cap on your head and you just don't know it's there. Or you got stupid written right on your forehead for everybody to see. Because breeds are not dangerous. Any, any size dog that's of a similar weight and size is just as powerful as any other dog of a similar weight and size. It has nothing to do with breed. When you're talking about issues with dogs and where people get injured or pets get injured or there's other damage, these are issues uh, that have to do with people and not dogs. And so uh, I have been battling um, eviction on that issue. In fact, uh, my community organization here effectively uh, terminated my tenancy and then told me that I had to leave the premises within 10 days. And they did this, and I'll just openly say here, I'm familiar with the law, and I'm familiar with courtrooms, and I'm familiar with judges and lawyers. I've lived around them, worked with them, and practiced improper on my own behalf several times before, always successfully. Uh, With one exception, one time I took a traffic court to, uh, a traffic ticket uh, to court and lost in the court. And then um, I, I appealed that to the Court of Appeals and then found out that it didn't matter that they didn't have a, uh, an iota of evidence against me that the Michigan Speed Task Force uh, somehow put together a set of things that the officer can testify to in court, and that means you're guilty no matter what. They've taken all the evidence requirements for the prosecution and traffic tickets on speed cases in this state out of the law. So you don't have to prove really anything. All they got to do is accuse you, write you a ticket for it, show up in court, testify to like seven things, and you're guilty. That's it. That's how they do traffic law here in Michigan. So that's why I lost that case in the Court of Appeals, because I still was under the assumption, and I didn't know about the Michigan Speed Task Force, or their changing of the laws so that they don't have any requirements to prove you guilty in speeding. That's the only case I ever lost. Uh, the rest of them were all civil cases, because that, that was, I think, a civil infraction case. So I guess it's a civil case, too. Uh, but the rest of them were all civil cases involving landlords, and usually ones where I had to take them to court. Uh, one time I fought an attorney against a, a, a group of people that were that had evicted me illegally. It is, I came home on my birthday. I was like 22 or 23 years old. Came home on my birthday, literally on my birthday, to find all my stuff on the road. And my rent was paid. And they had not said anything about having to move out. All my stuff was out there. They had moved somebody else in. And so then I had to call the police and show them that I had the key, that I had possession of that place. They put my stuff out. They didn't have a right to. And I took them to court for the $3,000 in damages they cost me in doing that. Um, so, uh, you know, I fought an attorney for three years to get that money. And eventually, I won. Uh, I'm not the kind of guy, if you're going to make accusations against or uh, start poking around or start slapping my rights down, that I'm going to stand for that. I, I will never stand for that. I will always defend myself. I will always fight for my rights. And so I had that going on. And then also, additionally, so I was, I was in court because uh, what they did was they terminated my tenancy. And uh, without giving me a right to an attorney or a jury, 
Um, and I demanded that at the at trial and gave him the fee and da 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 da. Um, didn't let me have an attorney. Didn't let me. Uh, didn't let me adjourn it for an attorney. Uh, didn't follow court rules. They didn't meet their burden of proof because there was no evidence presented or any testimony given by the plaintiff. Uh, the judge just slapped my rights down, forcing me to go into appellate court to ga- regain them, which is what I'm doing. So I got a uh, a, a stay of eviction, uh, and I'll probably be here through the summer uh, dealing with that issue. Now, alternatively, and another reason I've been off the air last week, all last week, in addition to this, I've been uh, working with um, fighting a local ordinance on medical marijuana. Lyon Township in Michigan, which is where I reside, um, decided that they wanted to do this other, you know, create ordinance here that uh, goes against state law, the Michigan Medical Marijuana Act. They want to restrict medical marijuana access and rules further than what the state does. And there's already a Supreme Court case called Turbeek versus the city of Wyoming which says that you cannot do that. And, and, and originally, I sued under the same terms. It was the exact, I sued Lyon Township originally because they did this exact same thing, outlawing medical marijuana. You can't do medical, we don't have medical marijuana in this township. And I said, you can't do that either. And the Turbeek decision answered the question uh, of Lyon Township. They figured out that their law had no effect or force. And so now they've created a new ordinance that says if you're a caregiver here, you have to have special zoning designation. And that somehow you're a business and a dispensary. And we're going to label you as such. And you have to have separation uh, between other caregivers and other facilities. And, uh, and it's just craziness. And so I told them I would, I would defend this. And so now I'm in the process of gathering 888 signatures to put it on the ballot instead of letting it go into effect so that we can indeed enjoy the rights under the Michigan Medical Marijuana Act as they were intended and not as uh, some township deemed to uh, modify. And so I've been busy uh, working on all of that ballot language, and we spent all day yesterday, in fact, collecting those signatures. So that's why I've been off the air last week. But we're coming back a-kicking and a mulin. Because in our absence, off the air, I made this prediction long ago. Uh, I, in fact, a year ago, Senator Mike Fulmer made the prediction with him that he would get this done. <clears throat> the medical marijuana thing in Pennsylvania. It, it's been a legislative effort. Been going for a while now that he would get this done. We talked to him last April or May. And uh, I've invited Senator Fulmer back. I'm hoping he'll come back on. But it seems that uh, the governor has, on Sunday, just yesterday signed Pennsylvania as the 24th state uh, to be uh, a medical marijuana state. And that's huge, huge news. But even huger news is coming back on the other side of the break when we get, uh, again, once again, for a second time on the air, hopefully, if it works out right, uh, Mr. Tommy Chong, when we come back live right here. You're getting the full melt. If you're like us, your pets aren't just animals. They're members of your family. Pet Pain CBD Hemp Oil Drops are great for aging as well as active dogs and cats. Some people are apprehensive about hemp treatments for pets. They ask us, what are you smoking? (laughs) Absolutely nothing, and neither will your pet. Like other hemp-based products for humans, the allure is all of the benefits of cannabis without any of the high. The CBD oil has shown to rejuvenate the bones, joints, brain, stomach, eyes, and heart. And the drops contain absolutely no corn, wheat, soy, artificial colors and flavors, or preservatives. Pick some up today. Visit PetPain.com or ask for Pet Pain at your local pet store. PetPain.com. CBD relief for your pet. When you need legal help, you don't want to guess at who's standing next to you in court. And when it comes to a medical marijuana defense, it's even smarter to partner with a lawyer before you need one. Based in Royal Oak, David Ledoy has a proven history of not being afraid to take your case all the way to the Supreme Court and win. Find the law offices of Ledoy Law at RedoyLaw.com. RedoyLaw.com is a quick reference on your rights concerning Michigan medical marijuana and up-to-date news. That's R-U-D-O-I Law.com. Call 248-935-9074 now and talk about your legal needs because at RedoyLaw.com, we don't just stand up for you. We stand up with you. What's up with these things, Victor? We decided to give ourselves stickers for each feature we release. 
read about 10,000 suggestions a week to create features that as traders we'd want to use. 10,000 suggestions? Who reads all of those? He does. For all the confidence you need, TD Ameritrade, you've got this. We need coffee. Got it right here. Cups. 12 ounce, 8 ounce recyclable creamers, sweetener, stirs, filters. Creamer, sweetener, stirs, filters, cake cups. Hazelnut, French vanilla, French roast, dark, light, medium, bold, extra bold. And decaf. Why would you say that? Why would you say that? Why would you say that? No reason. Free shipping for award members every day. Staples, make more happen. It's the Full Melt Radio Show. Radio Show. All right, we're back. With us on the phone this time is, once again, Tommy Chong. Welcome to the show, Tommy. Hey, thanks for having me. Say, uh, the ha- we're post-Hash Bash. We were out at the Hash Bash back at the beginning of the month. Uh, it, it was so busy out there, we didn't have, even have time to talk to you that day. Yeah, well, that's the way Hash Bashes go, you know. You just, everybody uh, just supposed to crowd around and get warm. <laughs> it was a little bit cold, admittedly. It was a little bit cold. <laughs> it was a nice mi- mi- Michigan summer day, you know. So, uh, you know, the snow piled up, but it didn't keep people from coming out, and it certainly didn't keep people from your booth. This is the first time you had a booth at the Hash Bash. Tell us about your booth, Tommy. It, it was, yeah, it was more like a shelter. <laughs> Just keep me out of, the, out of the, the rain and the snow. But it was great, you know. I mean, I got such beautiful fans in, in Michigan and Ann Arbor. And, and actually, they came from all over Ohio. They came from Florida. They came from everywhere. That hash bash is, is such a annual uh, celebration, you know. It's gonna it's gonna be there forever, I think. I don't think it's ever gonna go away. Even when we get uh, cannabis legalized, Tommy, I don't think hash bash is going to disappear. It'll turn from a well, protest into a celebration, right? Yeah, that's what it was. Uh, kind of last night, or last, uh, you know, the, the one year we just did. But you know, what kills me is that there's still speakers that. You know, <laughs> talking about we we got to legalize it and how good marijuana is for you. <laughs> you know, and and they're kind of in a in a time warp because hey, dude, it is legal. You know, it is medical. It's been proven. But you know, have old habits die hard. Uh, listen, uh, cannabis has been very good uh, to you from both a career standpoint and also from a health standpoint. Can you give us an update on your health, Tommy? Is that okay to ask? I just came from the doctor yesterday, and uh, my vital signs, the, the girl told me, she says, you got the vital signs of a teenager. <laughs> and I'm, 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 I can see 80. <laughs> That's how old I am. You know, I can, I, I'm almost 80 years old. And, uh, and I owe it all to cannabis. You know? And as far as, as far as the cancer goes, you know, the cancer doctors, again, you know, they're, Looking at me in amazement, you know, because they didn't know that I that I was a finalist on Dancing with the Stars, you know, and and they were just amazed and and they're amazed at my my recovery, and uh, again I owe it all, it all to uh, cannabis. I, I was uh, not only smoking it, you know, I do that for my appetite, but I uh, I was injecting uh, cannabis oil, you know, in in my butt and. Uh, and I think that really helped a lot, too. You know, although there's no medical studies saying what, uh, you know, the oil does for you, other than the uh, epilepsy uh, report, you know, that uh, Sanjay Gupta did on CNN, that I know of. You know, I know there's some really good uh, research going on now, but I can safely say and truthfully say that cannabis has kept me young and saved my life many times. You know, um, you don't sound a day over 55 there, Tommy. What's that? I say you don't sound a day over 55. Just saying. <laughs> I, I, was thinking, I was thinking a little day over 16. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, so according to the doctors, you, you got the vital signs of a 16-year-old, which is, you know. That's, that's, that's what they said. That was, that's, but yeah, and it feels good. You know, I've been working out, you know, doing my weights. But, you know, more than anything, I haven't been working hard. I've been taking it easy. I've been laying in the sun. I've been bodybuilding, you know, weightlifting and, and playing golf and uh, just relaxing, you know, just really enjoying uh, life. God love you, Tommy. Uh, you're, you're at a stage in life where, where you, that's what should be the majority of the day, right? 
Yeah, that's it. That's what it is. And then I then I make I went to an art opening and, and I make uh, uh, little pipes, you know, that I hang around my neck, little nada pipes. And uh, I, I was in the hardware store the other day and I looked at these little they're gas fittings, and they and you know and they screw together and it was like a little uh, Lego set, you know. <laughs> and so I so I put a little uh, pipe together and oh, and it's uh, brass. So so it looks kind of gold, you know, and so I put a string in it and I put it around my neck and I went to an art opening and and it was it was the hit of the art opening. Everybody said, "Oh, I love your necklace. Where'd you get that?" <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> a, it's, I tell the truth. I, I tell them, you know, in a hardware store, and they, oh, you know, an artist. I mean, that's that's what they do. You know, they pick up stuff that people throw away and they put it in a certain way, and then all of a sudden you got a expensive piece of art. So I'm I'm really into the art world now. What's uh, great about art is beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So, yeah, and and it's in the the pocketbook of the rich too. <laughs> I love that part. <laughs> you're right about that one. So um, I got to ask you, I, you're you're doing some stuff. I, you have a very busy schedule. I know you're you're running around at all the cannabis events uh, that you can possibly be at um, in a single year, but yet you're still finding time to. Uh, uh, what sword I'm looking for? Tickle the arts. I mean, uh, do you, is it true that you've got a, a, a possible movie deal in the works? Uh, you know, we've always had that, and uh, and you know, people are waiting. Uh, I've got a couple of. Uh, well, actually, we're we're waiting for. Um, there's a documentary on Cheech and Chong that's just being finished now, wow. and so we're kind of waiting. I'm waiting on that before I launch into another project. Because I want all the attention to be on the the documentary. It's sure. done by my my daughter Robbie and her uh, boyfriend uh, Dave, and they uh, they're putting they've been researching for a couple of years now, and they've been pulling out all this old material of Cheech and Chong, and and it's amazing because you know there's material that we never saw before, and we never it's never saw the light of day, and. And uh, so that's that's what I'm doing with the movies. I, I'm I'm working on other projects, but uh, that's the main one is uh, the documentary that's due out probably this summer. Awesome. Hey, uh, what about Chong's Choice? Can you tell people about that deal? Because I know a lot of people know about Chong's Choice, but don't know any details. Can you give us some details? Well, Chong's Choice. What happened? You know, when when they legalized everything, I, I went into different uh, modes. You know, I went into a roller, had a Chong roller for a while. I still got it, but uh, what we decided that you know we want to go where the where, what what we love the most, which is the uh, the cannabis, the weed, the flower, sure, and the oil. And so instead of you know, we had one strain out called Chong's. Uh, uh, Chong Star, you know, it was after me dancing with the stars. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's one strain in Colorado. It's being sold. It's doing well. But Chong's Choice really is uh, the best of the best. Like, I, I, I go around and I go to different growers. I meet all the people that want to meet me. And, uh, and they give me their product. And if it's, it's up to my standard, then I, I brand it. And we put it under the umbrella of Chong's Choice. And so now we're, we're in uh, Nevada, we're in Washington, we're in Colorado, and we're in, going to be in Michigan, big time. In fact, that's what we did at the Hash Bash. You know, we got, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, <laughs> I forget his name now. Um, oh, God. We got Charlie D. Thing. Anyway, anyway we're, we're, we're all over the place with Kong's Choice. Are you talking about, uh, are you talking about uh, Charlie? No. Charlie and yeah, well, Charlie was the guy that put it on. Ah, oh, come on, I can't think of his name. Kevin? No, uh, he was the MC. MC, uh, MC. Uh, Jeff? He was, no, he was uh, talking on the bullhorn, you know. And he has the the he has the the <laughs> the compassion clubs or the is that the J- talking about shot. Jamie? Who? Jamie? Jamie Lowell. No, God, yeah, it'll come not. to me. That's okay. <laughs> Say, um, it, oh, yeah, well, he's he's located in Hazel Park. Oh, well, that's that's uh, Charlie Strackbine at BDTs. Yeah, yeah, that's him. That's yeah, yeah. him. 
Um, yeah, they, they, they're going to be calling. They're going to be carrying all the all of my product. So, uh, is Chong's Choice only a cannabis variety, or is it a whole uh, brand umbrella? It's a brand umbrella. It's everything, like from oil to you know the dab material, and to, to the uh, uh, you know the what do you call it uh, shatter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> shatter. I, I forget all these terms. To me, it was always just weed. You know? <laughs> Um, but it's, uh, you know, what, like I said, you know, I, I want to put the, the Paul Newman stamp. You know you know how Paul Newman's got his, uh, all his grocery items, you know? Right. Well, I want to be the, the uh, Tommy Chung, uh, you know, it's going to, my name is going to ensure quality and uh, quantity. I see. So you, you're, you're saying you want to be the, the Paul Newman of cannabis stuff. That's right. That's there we right. Go. I got you. Makes sense. What can we you know, a lot of people. A lot of people don't know who Paul Newman. That Paul Newman was an actor. Yes. No. Look, <laughs> they, I, they think he was a, a you know a, a salad dressing. But <laughs> I, I don't care. You know, if people think all I was was a butt, you know, face on a on a good uh, smoke, that's that's fine with me. I'll, I'll go for that. Look, uh, Tom, you, your 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 stay here on this earth is indelibly marked. Uh, there will never be an earth, planet Earth without Tommy Chong. I hope not. Um, what can we expect next? What, uh, what are you looking forward to this year? And then, and then I'll let you go. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, you know, the documentary is, is the first. And then we're going to, uh, I'm going to be going around the country, you know, uh, promoting uh, the Chunk's Choice and the lifestyle. And I'm also uh, working with Steve Bloom of, uh, of what's it called? Stoner, uh, God, my memory is. Stoner Celeb? Stoner Celeb? Uh, he's got a website. You okay, know, all right. right. Anyway, he, him and I, we've been traveling around, and he, he sort of like moderates. He has, uh, he, he, talk, we sit side by side on the stage, and then Steve talks about my career, and then we take questions from the audience. And uh, it's pretty good. It, it's a lot of fun. And, and it's... Uh, He's like a moderator, you know, and we do a panel discussion. It's a, it's a, it's a, not quite stand up, but it's close enough that I, I get to uh, do my bits, you know, with a captive audience, and and it's a lot of fun. And so we've been, Steve and I've been doing that. We're going to the next one. I forget where it is. It's probably it could be in Washington. I'm not sure. You know, there's so much going on in the world now that I, I can hardly keep up with it. Look, uh, I do this every single day as a matter of a news, uh, so across the board, as wide as you can get on the subject, and I can't keep track of it myself. Yeah, it's gone crazy, hasn't it? I mean, we've outsold, the cannabis products has outsold, what, milk, eggs? <laughs> <laughs> All commodities, <laughs> right. <laughs> Isn't it something? I mean... <laughs> but that's true, you know. You can do it without food, but you can't do it without your cannabis. <laughs> well, you know, you you can do without food for a little while. <laughs> you don't want to do without food for too long. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but the thing is, once you get cannabis, you you will you will find food. That's somewhere. right. <laughs> it's it's a natural mechanism. It's built in. It, you get the cannabis first. The food comes second. It's always that way. That, that's right. You know, when I uh, was recovering from my operation. Uh, you know, the worst thing about the operation was that you lose your appetite because you lose your taste buds. Yeah, well... At least I did, you know, well, you, the drugs sen- and everything else. Sense of, and, taste and, and, and sense of taste and sense of smell is so important to wanting to eat. Yeah, well, you lose that, and, and then all of a sudden I just dropped weight like crazy. I, I, was, I lost something like 36 pounds. Oh, that's and, and I was like, I was looking like a, you know, POW. Wow. And, and so... Uh, <clears throat> but thank God for cannabis because right. you know I was I was on oxycotton for for uh, about a couple of days and I I enjoyed the high but it didn't give me an appetite at all. No. In fact, it made me kind of uh, uh, nausea. miserable, nauseous. You yeah. know, uh, yeah, kind, kind of paranoid. And then, uh, but as soon as I smoked up my the good bud. Oh man, it just changed my whole life. I got the appetite back, and next thing you know. I found myself in front of the refrigerator, and it was the greatest feeling in the world, man. 
open that refrigerator and look in there, and everything looks good. <laughs> That's uh, that's what I use cannabis for myself is uh, appetite and and I think yeah. I, I thank God for it every single day. Yes, yes, it, we do. It's the thing that keeps me here, Tommy. Yeah, it keeps us all here. We all need to eat and drink, but uh, water, but definitely. Uh, uh, and that's another thing. But uh, cannabis, you know, you get cotton mouth, and what's the best thing for cotton mouth? <laughs> water, <laughs> water, because that's what we need in our system. We need water. Well, the food does no good without the water. That's for sure. Yeah, that's good. And then, and then it it, it brought my my sense of humor. You know, it disappeared when I was sick, and then all of a sudden, once I got high, man, everything started. I could see the humor and everything. I started <laughs> making jokes <laughs> to the doctor. It was you know the proctologist. <laughs> I taught him a, a new handshake. It's with the elbow. <laughs> <laughs> were you making Were you making butt jokes with the proctologist? Is that what you're saying? Oh yeah, oh yeah. It was so much fun <laughs> with with all of them. With all the, you know, and 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 you'd be surprised how many people in the medical profession are are you know really heavy potheads. You know, oh no, no, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't either. <laughs> you know, they'll never admit to it, of course. But uh, you know, not not an open public. But uh, no, I've met them, many of them. And you, and you know what other uh, industry has a lot of potheads? Which one? Airlines, airline industry. Really? Yeah, the uh, pilots. Pilots, they they smoke up all the time. Well, uh, it, uh, it's probably good because it, you know the breathalyzer doesn't catch the alcohol. Yeah, well, you know, the, you don't want to, you don't want a drunk pilot. No, uh, and and so it's like sports. You know, uh, so many uh, athletes, you know, prolong their career because they 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 shunned alcohol and they went for the pot. Like Kareem Abdul Jabbar, for instance. You know, he was a very good friend of mine, and he played seven, eight years past his prime. You know, like Kobe quit. You know, he played twenty years, and Kobe quit. Well, Kareem at his Kobe's age, Kareem played eight more years and got like two or three more championship belts, and and it was all because of pot. Well, because it, he's a, Kareem's into jazz and he's into pot and and not alcohol because he's a Muslim, you know. Right, right. Um, it, you know, uh, uh, cannabis and sports have always gone together, and, and it seems like uh, there, you know, now that now that cannabis is a little more uh, uh, apropos, so to speak. Um, yeah. You, you find people coming out of the closet and, and people giving great uh, stories about their cannabis use, uh, like Darren McCarty. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, Darren will clearly tell you cannabis saved my life. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that we we had a great talk about that. And you know, the thing is, those athletes, you know, I mean, they make a lot of money, and but they they sacrifice their body and their mind, their head, right. everything. And and for that short period of time, and then when they're finished their career, you know, a lot of them, you know, because of the alcohol, that it, they, that, it, that was it for their life, basically. Because if you if you're not on the ice skating around and burning off all that uh, the toxins and the poisons, right? Then then it takes about a, a couple of months before you're you know, you're you're a helpless alcoholic. Well, but your, your metabolism guys, changes, yeah, and you get it gets really ugly. Yeah. Yeah, and not only that, but think about what it does. For it. Pot really is a, a brain uh, uh, tonic. It helps the brain. That's why the epilepsy, you know, in little kids is cured by pot because it goes affects the brain, which controls the nervous system. Right. See, and and what it does what it does what really prolongs uh, everybody's life is it slows you down. It slows down everything, and that's what you need to do. That's why when bears uh, hibernate in the wintertime, you know, their whole metabolism slows right down, and that's what we have to do. If we want to live longer, we want to slow our, everything down, which is, uh, you know, because uh, that's what causes the, the, the problems is if things are speeded up and they don't have time to heal, you, and, and that's the problem. You know what slows things down, Tommy? Uh, a, nice, a nice calm indica. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> I love it all. Hey, you know what I got now? I got going. I got these kids. In fact, I'm just going to, on my way over to the to the my breakfast spot, <clears throat> and I got uh, 
the waiters there, they're testing my Chong's choice for me. <laughs> and, oh, and they love it. I give them the Chong choice, and then they test it, and then they write out their report. You know what it? How would they liked it? And it's like a like a connoisseur, and they and and they write beautiful stuff. I'm going to start posting it on my uh, on my site. You know their their uh, review of the different strains. It, it's so beautiful. We're going to make a book of them because it's, it's, they're they're so great. And 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 that's what it does. It uh, you know the pot the flower just spreads so much joy to the world. You said it right there. What a great place to end the interview, Tommy. Joy to the world. Yeah, okay, man. <laughs> no, I thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate you. Are you planning on maybe coming? When's your next uh, foray back into Michigan? Can you give us a heads up? Well, yeah, I'm going to come back there and, uh, and uh, you know, promote my product more. And I, and also, I want to I want to do a, a festival or, or some kind of celebration I was at a, a grower that he's in one of uh, Ford's uh, homes or farms. It's a little little farm where where Henry Ford, I think, grew his hemp. Right I, for, the, for the hemp sure. car. Are you talking about for the hemp car? I don't. I'm not. Yeah. No, I, uh, it, uh, it was a grower. I forget his name, but you know, he took me out to uh, his farm, which was owned by either Henry Ford or Henry Ford's engineer. And and that's where he's got his grow in in the barn there, and and but it's a nice uh, uh, piece of property, and it would be perfect for a festival, you know, outdoor festival and little camping, you know, we do some camping or just drive up for the day and just go in there and have a outdoor farmers market uh, and and entertainment and just basically throw the grounds because Henry Ford was a great pot advocate, you know he. He was anti-Semitic, but he was sure pro pot. <laughs> I never thought about it in those terms <laughs> until you just mentioned it. He was anti-Semitic, yeah. but pro pot. I love it. Yeah, okay, man. Well, I got to go. Thank you so much, Tommy Chong. We'll talk to you soon. Anytime, man. Give me a call. Anytime. All right, brother. You're getting the bull melt. I've seen things no man should bear. And those that every man should dare. From the beaches of Normandy to the far reaches of the earth. In my life, I have lived millions of lives. I've outrun robots and danced with dinosaurs. I've faced the faces of fear and fortitude and witnessed great beauty in the making. I've kept the company of kings and queens, but I'm no royalty or saint. I've traveled, trekked, wandered, and roamed, only to find myself right where I belong. Jeep. See your authorized Jeep retailer for details on how you can become a Jeep owner. We ask people to tell us something that happened in their past and something that might happen in their future. The good things were put on yellow magnets and the bad ones on blue. The results show the past was a pretty even mix of good and bad, yet the future was almost all good things. Now that you've seen the results of this experiment, what does it mean to you? We all want to think about positive stuff. Realistically, there will be down times. It's great to think optimistically, but let's plan for whatever the future might bring. Prudential, bring your challenges. Root Metrics, in the nation's largest independent study, tested wireless performance across the country. Verizon won big with 153 state wins. AT&T got 38, Sprint got 2, and T-Mobile got 0. Verizon also won first in the U.S. for data, call, speed, and reliability. AT&T got text. Stuck on an average network? Join Verizon, and we'll cover your cost to switch. Introducing Sacred Elements, a place for natural and alternative healing for the mind, body, and soul. Sacred Elements. It's one place, all solutions. Registered, licensed, certified, ordained. Sacred Elements. Massage, hypnosis, Reiki. Sacred Elements. Raindrop, aroma and color therapy. Body detox, ministry, life coaching, weight and nutrition counseling. Sacred Elements. Next to this weekly, 400 South Door Highway, Florida. 11 to 7 daily, closed Sunday. Call 810-259-2570. Hey, it's Steve Green for the Sweet. 
leaf in Flint, because now getting safe access to medical cannabis patients in Flint, Michigan is never more welcoming. Presenting the Sweet Leaf, a brand new patient experience bringing 12 carefully selected caregivers housed in nine separate offices to distinctly assist you with their knowledge and reputation for excellent patient care. Classes and training coming soon in the large community room. Check it out in person. 400 South Fort Highway or call 810-259-2571. The Sweet Leaf Center in Flint, 810-259-2571. It's the Full Milk Radio Show. Radio Show. Thomas says, stay home, get away from me, saying I was not. The Full Milk Radio Show is brought to you every single day by our fine sponsor. Making up stories, keeping it secret, taking your life. But particularly, uh. I'm still so David Rudoy. Also, I gotta I gotta say a shout out to uh, Bob, my friend Bob, and Kim out of the Sweet Leaf in Flint. I also, I uh, can't. Uh, I would be very remiss if I did not mention uh, PetPain.com and also uh, the people at NoSmell.com. Where right now you can get a discount on your No Smell bag. Uh, so nobody knows. At NoSmell.com, use Full Melt. Just use Full Melt as uh, the uh, discount code, and you'll get 10% off of your order instantly right there. Um, I also would be remiss if I didn't mention this story. Uh, this, and, and I'm doing this now because, wow, what a revealing uh, interview that Tommy Chong. Wow. I'm still just reeling. The, the chair is spinning here after talking to Tommy Chong on the show uh, for the second time. And uh, I just... Um, Revealed so much in that interview. I didn't expect that he was going to talk to us that long, but he made our next segment really short. So uh, I wanted to opine uh, about this opine. I'm talking about an opinion piece in the Detroit News uh, today that said how Lansing can regulate marijuana in Michigan. This is by Gary Wolfram. Remember, this is an opinion piece. Michigan legalized medical marijuana in 2008. Unfortunately, the legislation left a good deal of gray areas and had a little regulatory supervision. The Michigan legislature is considering bills that will establish a strong regulatory framework for a competitive medical marijuana industry and provide valuable revenue for the state, its schools, and local government. By establishing tiers of independent, separate commercial enterprises, these bills will create safer environments for patients who need medicine and create certainly for businesses. It will be also minimizing the black market with its shady practices, fly-by-night actors, and potentially dangerous products. House Bill 4209 would generate between $44 million and $64 million a year funds for local communities, public safety, and public services. Once more, Michigan has an opportunity to create thousands of jobs with a legitimate, licensed, regulated medical marijuana industry, including jobs for people who would otherwise be unemployed or underemployed. All of these things true. However, um, I would interject here on this opinion, because remember I said I was going to opine on the opine, that uh, all of these things are already true absent said legislation. That there's nothing wrong with the Medical Marijuana Act we created in 2008 as it stands. Now, I do wish they had mentioned specifically dispensaries in the act. Absent that, local communities have decided really against the wishes of the Attorney General, who would rather shut medical marijuana down completely, probably even including uh, this foray, 4209, which is a House bill in Michigan, designed now, which originally 4209 was supported by advocates. It was supported by the patients and the caregivers because the language of it was for them, just like the Medical Marijuana Act was. In fact, it was the medical marijuana existing community that lobbied the state government to get 4209 done. But then, after taking, bilking tons of money from this same group of people, um, the principal author of House Bill 4209 decided to turncoat. In fact, they were calling him names loudly at the last protest in, in Lansing when Mike Calton a Republican from Nashville in Michigan, uh, decided uh, to gut the language uh, based on some new money coming his way. Larger money. See, it's all about the money. 
by a group of Republicans who decided that they wanted to force this issue in the state legislature rather than um, take their chances at the ballot box. Uh, currently, there is pending petition initiative from the uh, people at MI Legalize. And uh, I believe that they will have gathered enough signatures by the June deadline to get this on the August, I'm sorry, the, uh, the November ballot, the presidential ballot this year. We'll see if that happens. I believe it's going to. But what I'm saying is I'm interrupting this guy's opinion piece because all of what he says is true, but you don't need to pass uh, the bill that he's trying to lobby for. My analysis of Michigan's medical marijuana industry looked at the number of registered patients in Michigan, the percentage of patients who would purchase medicine from licensed provisioning centers, the average each patient purchases each month, the average retail price paid per ounce, and the growth of retail sales in non-cannabis items. Using information available from Michigan's Department of Licensing and Regulatory Affairs and sales data from other states that allow medical marijuana for registered medical marijuana patients in a multi-tiered system, I estimated House Bill 4209's 3% excise tax would generate between $14.7 million and $21.2 million. The sales tax would bring an additional $29.6 million to $42.3 million. The range of estimates depends on how many registered patients choose to purchase their medication from retailers and if the legislation results in more patients seeking legalized treatment. From the new excise tax revenues, municipalities will receive $4.4 million to $6.3 million. Counties will get $5.9 to $8.5 million. County sheriffs will receive $882,000 to $1.1 million. And Michigan's general fund would get $3.7 million to $5.3 million. This revenue distribution is based on the excise tax of 3% as proposed in the legislation. The sales tax revenue would generate between $21.7 and $31 million for the school aid fund and between $7.4 million and $10.2 million for municipalities with the remainder going to the general fund. The framework would open the... And I think that's uh, uh, overtaxation. I think that leaves too much room left for the black market indeed. He goes on to say that by adopting a strong regulatory framework, we can promote safety for patients and create a stable business climate in Michigan that promotes free market competition and generates much needed revenues that will benefit every community in Michigan. Uh, Mr. Wolfman, PhD, is the William E. Simon Professor of Economics at Hillsdale College and President of Hillsdale Policy Group. He wants to promote this But I'm afraid it's all in the pocket of big businessmen who know nothing about the medical marijuana industry as a whole whatsoever. You're getting the full melt. Promotional consideration provided by nosmell.com pioneering the storage market for cannabis users the no smell patented bag technology offers users 100 percent smell proof detection from even the most sophisticated of noses nosmell.com so nobody knows when placing your order for a no smell bag make sure to use discount code bull melt and take 10 percent off the entire order learn more about no smell technology at nosmell.com young students are our future they're eager to learn eager to succeed, eager to make the world a better place. And they want to make it to school safely. Share the road, take care when passing, and always leave three feet between you and people on bikes. Bikes are legal road vehicles. We're all drivers. When you need legal help, you don't want to guess at who's standing next to you in court. And when it comes to a medical marijuana defense, It's even smarter to partner with a lawyer before you need one. Based in Royal Oak, David Ledoy has a proven history of not being afraid to take your case all the way to the Supreme Court and win. Find the law offices of Ledoy Law at RudoyLaw.com. RudoyLaw.com is a quick reference on your rights concerning Michigan medical marijuana and up-to-date news. That's R-U-D-O-I Law.com. Call 248-935-9074 now and talk about your legal needs because at RudoyLaw.com, we don't just stand up for you. We stand up with you. If you're like us, your pets aren't just animals. They're members of your family. Pet Pain CBD Hemp Oil Drops are great for aging as well as active dogs and cats. Some people are apprehensive about hemp treatments for pets. They ask us, what are you smoking? Absolutely nothing, and neither will your pet. 
Like other hemp-based products for humans, the Allure is all of the benefits of cannabis without any of the high. The CBD oil has shown to rejuvenate the bones, joints, brain, stomach, eyes, and heart. And the drops contain absolutely no corn, wheat, soy, artificial colors and flavors, or preservatives. Pick some up today. Visit PetPain.com or ask for Pet Pain at your local pet store. PetPain.com. CBD relief for your pet. Hey, it's Steve Green for the Sweet Leaf in Flint, because now getting safe access to medical cannabis patients in Flint, Michigan, is never more welcoming. Presenting the Sweet Leaf, a brand new patient experience bringing 12 carefully selected caregivers housed in nine separate offices to distinctly assist you with their knowledge and reputation for excellent patient care. Classes and training coming soon in the large community room. Check it out in person, 400 South Fort Highway, or call 810-259-2571. The Sweet Leaf Center in Flint, 810-259-2571. 571. It's the Full Melt Radio Show. Radio Show. More wasted money today. I'll talk about that story in a minute as we waste more federal money, more state money on jailing old people, old sick people for pot. And this time it's a life sentence for a 76 year old guy. We'll talk about that in a minute. I want to do, uh, talk about this other thing uh, because it was big news. I think it's huge, gigantic news. Uh, medical marijuana now legal in 24 states or so says uh, CNN money. In fact, let's see if I can play this little piece. I'm hoping that this is not, I'm hoping that this is not uh, just um, video with uh, script on it. I want to see, uh, there should be some uh, audio associated with this. Uh, let's see if it'll play, and if it'll play without a commercial. No, it's going to play a commercial first. Damn it. <laughs> see, that happens every time. <laughs> I'll just tell you who the commercial's for when I see who it is. It's some kind of food thing? Nope. Oh, it still looks like food. It looks like, oh, nope, it's Korean air. There you go. Here we go. We're on the streets of Tel Aviv watching a guy smoke marijuana. Not the illegal kind, but medical marijuana. Call it kosher cannabis. Its growing usage and the country's liberal medical cannabis laws have made Israel one of the world leaders in medical cannabis research and development. Cannabis until now was not bred in the most uh, scientific or most modern uh, methods. In a secret, secure location in northern Israel, we visit Tikkun Olam, one of the country's largest medical cannabis growers. They show us what they call their mother house, the genetic warehouse of cannabis, where they splice together different plants to create new strains of cannabis. They're pushing the plant to its extremes. Some strains have some of the highest levels of THC ever grown, the chemical that makes you high. Others have none at all. They're high in CBD, the chemical that's been shown to have medical benefits. I believe that we are scratching the beginning of the world of uh, the knowledge about cannabis plants. Each new cannabis harvest is lab tested to measure the exact levels of chemicals. The goal, to one day create marijuana plants tailored for specific treatments and maybe even specific people. Israel is right on the cusp of being able to, to grab hold of this entire industry and become the, the real mecca for marijuana research. In Israel, the politician encouraging this revolution of medical cannabis is the ultra-Orthodox Minister of Health. If I have to look strictly how I can help the, the, the uh, people, sick people which need this cannabis, as I, I think I did the right thing. Exporting cannabis is still illegal, so Tikkun Olam has started joint ventures with farms in America to grow strains of cannabis developed in Israel. The medical cannabis market is expected to hit more than $20 billion in America alone by 2020, according to newly released numbers from industry researchers New Frontier. We're standing here in front of a number of the oils and different types of cannabis you sell. How big can this be as an export business? It could be a business of uh, hundreds of millions of dollars. Medical cannabis still has its critics, and doctors say global regulations make cannabis research difficult. Cannabis advocates insist the signs will back up the usage and turn this once illicit drug into a blooming market. Orrin Lieberman, CNN, Tel Aviv. All right, so I'm a little disappointed that the uh, article here uh, with CNN Money... Unlimited... Is, oh, wait a minute. Uh, so that, it, that it, I'm a little disappointed that it's not um, uh, germane to the to the story headline, which is medical marijuana now legal in 24 states, and the 24th state is Pennsylvania. 
Uh, just became the 24th U.S. state to legalize medical marijuana. Governor Tom Wolf approving the measure Sunday, allowing the sale and consumption of cannabis for treating specific diseases or symptoms. Wolf, a Democrat, said in a statement that the measure, quote, will improve the quality of life for patients and their families throughout Pennsylvania, end quote, by giving them access to a new treatment option. The state will roll out its medical marijuana program over the next 18 to 24 months. Under the new law, up to 150 dispensaries can obtain an authorization to sell weed to patients with a doctor's certification. According to a fiscal impact report, Pennsylvania estimates application and registration fees will net $10 million within a year. The state will collect a 5% sales tax, a 5% tax rather on medical marijuana purchases. Among the disease in, the diseases included in the uh, statute's definition of serious medical condition are cancer, HIV AIDS, Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, spinal cord damage, epilepsy, inflammatory bowel disease, glaucoma, PTSD, and autism. Voters in Alaska, Colorado, Oregon, Washington State, and D.C. have legalized the sale of marijuana for recreational use, and 20 states and D.C. have decriminalized possession of small amounts of marijuana, according to the National Conference of State Legislatures. However, it is still a banned substance under federal law. And uh, it amazes me that people here in this state, in this state, are still ignorant of the idea that the state Supreme Court, this state's Supreme Court, ruled that the federal supremacy clause has zero impact or effect on the medical marijuana law established under the Citizens Initiative uh, passed by the citizens of this state via vote. In 2008. That's what that's what the Supreme Court here in this state has concluded. So it bothers me on collecting signatures uh, for my own ordinance issue here in, in because they created an ordinance that is indeed illegal and that I indeed will sue them for. Uh, I will sue them for declaratory relief. I'm not after their money. I want a judge to declare their ordinance illegal and unenforceable. And before that happens, before I go through that, that channel, that expense, because I'll have to appeal that all the way to the Supreme Court, um, I'm going to place the issue on the ballot by collecting 888 signatures rather than just letting it go into effect. That's what I'm currently in the news for doing. And on collecting said signatures here within my own little tiny community, just in the park in which I live, uh, there were people who, when I came to the door and talked about this ordinance, which is wasting our resources, it's wasting money that the township does not have to defend this issue all the way to the Supreme Court. This little township has more important things on its agenda than creating medical marijuana regulations, which is what that ordinance does. And it specifically labels patients and caregivers well, not patients, just caregivers. It labels caregivers businesses, it defines them as a dispensary. And it makes certain rules about their, their zoning and other issues. And it, what it's doing is it's restricting state law further, and I won't let them get away with it. I will take it back to the Supreme Court and let them decide should this law go into effect. But I'm trying not to let it go into effect by getting those 888 signatures and then rallying everybody down to the polls on uh, August, uh, what is it, 2nd, for the primary election to get them to vote uh, on this referendum. Let the people speak about this. Stop wasting our resources. There were so many people that signed that petition, my petition, the one that I printed and put together, uh, to put this on the ballot rather than letting it go into effect because that's what the law says has to happen if indeed I collect that many signatures, and I'm going to. And when I get those signatures in, and I hope they get verified by uh, uh, the uh, township clerk, Michelle Cash, uh, who I'm hoping will say that everything is good with all those signatures and, and the form, and then place the issue respectfully on the ballot so that the people of our township can decide whether this ordinance should stay or whether it should go. Because at the end of the day, everybody in this country believes that we have a representative democratic government. It's all fallacy. We're supposed to have what we believe is a representative democratic government. But indeed, in this country, we have a democratic republic. 
And indeed, in this country, we have terrible political corruption. This country is no longer run by the people, for the people, of the people. This country is now run by the wealthy, for the rich, and for the insanely... That's the word I'm looking for. I'll find the word before the abuse again. Oh, let's just say uh, gluttonous. For the insanely gluttonous. I knew I'd find it. So until tomorrow, thanks for joining us today on this wonderful, warm Michigan day. For the Tommy Chung edition, and Pennsylvania 2, of the Full Melt Show. The Full Melt Show is a production of TFM Media.